Uh, good afternoon or good morning wherever you might be on the planet. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good day from International Aquafeed here in the UK. Uh, you're joining myself, Roger Gilbert, the publisher of uh, International Aquafeed magazine at Perindale Publishers, and we're in the Rongo Rongo Live uh, video studio. And it's a great pleasure for me to welcome today our guest. And before I do say, I want to wish everybody out there a Happy New Year and all the best for 2021. But in our studio today, we have a guest who is familiar to many of you, uh, but we haven't, might not have actually spoken to him in person. It is Eric Hampel, uh, editor for International Aquafeed from uh, Norway. Uh, welcome, Eric. Thank you very much, Roger, and Happy New Year to you too. And yes, a happy new year. Uh, how's the weather up there in Norway? Uh, we're, we're cold, we're down about zero degrees, but what's it like up there in Norway? Well, it's cold here too. This morning it was about minus seven, where I'm uh, just outside of Oslo, but the, the weather is just gorgeous. It's blue skies, or rather now it's, uh, the sun is, is down already. Yes. Of course, so it's uh, a little bit dusk, Yes, but that's winter up here. Well, that sounds very, very nice. We're, we're just covered in grey skies as normal well, for this time of year. Um, however, Eric, um, you know, with us moving from 2020 into 2021, um, I just have a few questions to, to sort of whet the appetite of our, our readers or viewers. Um, how, we, we've launched an app. And this is uh, the difference in our app is that uh, the one that we're publishing uh, in January this month is the one in Norwegian. Uh, how do you think that we're going, putting our magazine on its own app for Norwegian readers? Well, I think it's a great idea. Unfortunately, I myself am not very technical with apps, etc. Uh, I have the hardest time controlling my so-called smartphone. But I have learned, and I've had a look at it, and it looks great. It looks like it's easy to use, and I think having it in Norwegian is a great advantage for our uh, Norwegian readers. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, of course, you know the pandemic has uh, encouraged us to uh, go further into digital publishing, uh, uh, in addition to obviously our print version. So. Uh, we'll be very interested in how you find it being taken up uh, by your readership up there. Uh, I was wanting to ask, what are the developments occurring in Norway at the moment for aquaculture production? What are the key, what are the key um, issues that the industry is facing? Well, lately there has been a lot of talk and several conferences on land-based aquaculture, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing land-based uh, operations popping up all over the place. Uh, I think in the last few weeks or months they have run up against some problems, of course, but that's only to be uh, expected. But land-based is coming, also in Norway, although we have a lot of open sea. And that's the other development, open sea farming. Mm -hmm. You've seen these enormous structures that they put out along the coast of, Nor of Norway. There are two or three of them already. The drawback with that is that they're so expensive that um, mm. I think uh, I read somewhere that the, the first one that came was over a, a billion knock, which is a lot of money, mm. just in the investment. Then a third development that we're seeing right now is that cob farming is coming back. Mm. We start. We tried cod farming around 15 years ago, and it was a flop. A lot of people lost a lot of money, and the main reason was that the price of producing farm cod was too high. Mm. And now they have managed to push the price down, and they're targeting the upper end of the market only. Mm. And who knows? It might be uh, might be successful this time. And uh, something that's very close to my heart, and this is the fourth thing I want to mention, is a new focus on aquatic plants. 
we have an enormous amount of it and we have a potential which is just unlimited it seems but only recently have we started to think seriously about aquatic plants as as species to farm i think this is going to be very exciting in the future wow do, do you mean we farming for that uh as a source of nutrition for fish or are we farming it for uh, vegetable type products for human consumption both and for pharmaceutical products oh. there there is there seems to be I, i'm not a biologist by any means uh, but it, there seems to be an enormous amount of, of products that you can put aquatic plants into and we need to protect the aquatic plants also for yeah. in, in order to uh, to create uh, nursery grounds for for fish mm -hmm. we've seen them being uh, uh, I, I remember when I was in uh, Namibia for instance the diamond industry was in mining offshore and they completely ruined the aquatic plant uh, areas yeah. Um, so we need it for a number of reasons, but I think also for both for feed, for for the fish, for food, and for pharmaceuticals. Oh, that's a great! Th those are three substantial areas and a new type of industry to look forward to. Uh, and of course, Norway has a lot of the technology that those those types of industries will depend upon, and also long-standing experience and in, in those cold water environments so you know we'll watch this space um looking back but you know we're looking forward but looking back a little bit and who's to know we're right in the the midst of it at the moment but covid is not uh not relinquishing its grip on uh, the human population yet and uh, i know that the aquaculture industry has suffered some uh, some setbacks uh, what has the Norwegian experience been uh, relating in aquaculture and uh, COVID? Well, we had uh, an unfortunate incident um, early on where we were blamed for bringing uh, COVID into um, China again with Norwegian salmon. This was incorrect as it turned out, but it's very hard to kill a lie. Mm. as we uh, experience uh, these days with uh, elections etc it's uh, once the lie is put out there it becomes the truth mm. so it has affected us to some extent uh, I think in time it will be uh, disappearing again but it has affected us mm. and of course COVID has affected us in other ways for instance the lack of transport all of a sudden, we weren't able to send uh, airplanes with yeah. uh, with salmon mm. to to faraway markets. So, and also, it's been very difficult to to send uh, fish by by truck. Most of the fish going from Norway is on on uh, trailers, mm. and it's very difficult because these trailers have to go through several countries, and it sometimes the drivers are not allowed to enter the country so in all in all covid has been uh, difficult in many ways i think that it will last for quite some time yet i don't think we get back to normal this year mm. i'm i know i'm pessimistic but it takes an awful long time to inoculate so many people that we need to to give the vaccine to before we can return to normal i'm very sorry about that because i'm tired of sitting here in my office alone <laughs> i think we can all agree with you there um i think uh well just the uk experience with brexit and the trucks at the port of dover where you know thousands of trucks and then suddenly all the drivers have to take a covid test before they are allowed to enter the continent or into france in particular so you know moving food around in europe particularly by truck must be very difficult 
but, but maybe uh, you know the the um, bright side might be that we're addressing biosecurity in a new way that might have a bigger impact on animal uh, fish and human uh, safety in the future uh, as we understand how these viruses are more are working and how we can contain them so uh, we've got to look positively towards the future and and on that point um, looking towards the future again what, what do you see the outlook uh, for aquaculture in 2021? Well um, on a global scale I think it will continue to grow I think um, I think we're it may be growing a little bit slower for a short while but not for very long uh, with regard to Norway I think uh, we will see a, a small decline in production maybe um, and also consequently in exports as 95% mm. of our production is exported but I think that we will see that the distribution chains now will come up with new ways of distributing this fish to, to the consumer uh, more will go to home delivery, takeout, and less to the restaurants, at least for the time being. Mm. I think people will want to get back to the restaurants uh, eventually, but this development uh, that we have seen, for instance, in home delivery is here to stay, mm. in my opinion. Mm. Uh, it's growing fast right now, but it it will not disappear when things are normal again. And I think we will also see development um, in terms of products, new products that are easier to use for the consumer. Mm. Basically, the consumer doesn't know how to prepare fish or seafood. And therefore, semi-produced uh, uh, dishes will be very important. We've seen this, well, Every time I go to uh, the supermarket in, in London, I'm amazed at the uh, selection that is available there. Mm. And we don't have that here yet, not to the same extent. Mm. But I, I think we will see that there will be a product development uh, for a number of products, making life easier for, for the consumer. Mm. Okay, yeah, yeah I, I can... I follow your logic there, and we've seen that in the, for instance, in in flour milling, where you know the uh, traditional way of receiving our, our our food based on flour products was uh, was totally interrupted, and uh, manufacturers had a difficult job putting out small packages of flour for for home consumption, and uh, this has led to a, a rise in uh, artisan uh, flour flour manufacturers. So. Uh, all industries are sort of meeting the same challenge, I think, and it's good to hear that aquaculture is recognizing that and uh, altering its processes accordingly. That's that's very good to hear. Um, one final question, Eric, while we have the time. Um, I see that uh, Aquanor is on our calendar for uh, this coming year, 2021. Uh, last one was in 2019 obviously before the pandemic um, what have you learned from 2020 and i'm thinking of nor fishing event that you hold uh, as to whether or not we can host an aquanor in 2021 well it it was a very steep learning curve we um, made a decision, our board made a decision, the board of, uh, of the North Fishing Foundation, which owns the two exhibitions, North Fishing and Aquanor, made a decision as late as uh, mid-May that we would try and do a digital version of North Fishing. At that point, we didn't have the software, we didn't have the speakers, we didn't have anything. But we managed to put it together and uh, with the help of very professional uh, technicians and, and uh, TV people, etc., we managed to have a three-day event uh, 
in Trondheim without any people almost. I think we were in total about 30 people. And we managed also to set up uh, the digital event so that the visitors could visit the stands, the so-called stands yeah. online. And they could also enter into one-to-one -one meetings through the internet. In all, we had about 15,000 visitors. My goodness, yeah. And about 10% of them set up one-to-one -one meetings with the exhibitors. Oh. So we regarded it as, as a big success and therefore decided that this is something we will do in the future at every uh, exhibition, no matter w whether we can do it a physical exhibition or not. This will be an addition to to the uh, physical exhibition. At the last uh, Aquanor, we had about 27,000 visitors in Trondheim. Mm. But I think that uh, we can reach a much wider audience by adding the net. Mm. We have decided, therefore, that we shall run the uh, Aquanor as planned. We're still planning for a physical event, although we don't know if that can be done. But the dates are the 24th until the 27th of August this year, mm -hmm. as planned. Uh, we hope, of course, that it, we can have a physical event. I believe that it will be a limited physical event. I think that not all nationalities will be able to travel to Trondheim yeah. to be part of the uh, of the exhibition, but we hope that some can, and we'll come up with some interesting ways of presenting them. Uh, <laughs> I think that the industry is also showing that it believes this will happen, because most of our stands are sold out already. Wow. And that, those are the physical stands. Wow. Wow. Uh, we will put more emphasis on, on conferences, speeches, presentations, and, and seminars. This is something that we have wanted to do for a long time. So we're adding a day of, of a conference before the actual uh, event itself. And this we're doing in in cooperation with the uh, SINTEF organization in Trondheim mm -hmm. and other universities, etc. And also with the FAO. Okay, okay. So um, uh, we're, we're excited about it and we hope that we are also able to improve our internet platform for the event because it was good, but I'm sure it can be better. Yeah. That's that's fabulous. I mean, what a great success last year! Fifteen thousand attending yep. North Fishing. Uh, so the signs are really good for this year. And those dates again: twenty four, twenty seven of August, two thousand and twenty one. Um, yeah, I th you know, great initiative there, uh, Eric. And uh, I think this might be the way that a lot of event organisers are going. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, just the impact of COVID on the international travel, um, whether people yeah. bite this bite this bullet and uh, you know offer those two two types of uh, engagement, um, which puts us back to where we started with uh, a digital app <laughs> and yeah. the Norwegian edition on the app. Um, you know, I, I think that we could safely say that uh, if a, Nor a Norwegian reader has the app on his phone, we will keep him informed about uh, Aquanor in 2021. <laughs> How does that sound? Well, yeah, thank you. I, I think it, I, I really think that the magazine, with all the different um, different communication channels that you're using now, has a chance to be become an even more important tool mm. and medium in the industry. Mm. We've seen this. Look at us now, today. Yeah. We're sitting here uh, on each of our side of the North Sea. Yeah. And uh, I, it, not very long ago, I was part of the, the conference you had in Taiwan. Yes, yes, we joined each other in Taiwan, didn't we? Yeah, right. And this gives us so many new opportunities and 
and uh, I, I think it's limitless what we can do. Yeah. But I must also say, as being a relatively conservative uh, person, I enjoy the paper copies of the magazines yeah. also. Yeah, well, we, we are keeping those going, don't worry. And I think that it's a bit like Aquanor. We want to have the face-to-face, -face, the hard copy, but we also recognize that people can't always get that copy in their hands. So we're going to provide a digital copy for them. And it's all set up to go. So you have the link there. So I'm sure you're free to, to share it with uh, any of your colleagues and friends out there in Norway. Uh, but Eric, uh, from me here in the Rongo Rongo Live Studio, uh, thank you very, very much for joining us on my afternoon, your evening. Uh, the sun looks as though it's setting up there and uh, we'll, uh, part, yes, we'll part company. But uh, thank you very much and all the best with your endeavors in 2021. Same to you. I look forward to uh, a challenging time. Yes. Thank you, Eric. Thank you.